The Supreme Court has been told the Peter Ellis criminal appeal should be heard despite his death in order to provide finality to the case and restore his mana. If the appeal is granted, it could establish a significant precedent for how tikanga is used in courts up and down the country. Mediana Johnson reports from the Supreme Court. In a packed out courtroom and with a full lobby, the five justices heard how tikanga is relevant to the appeal of Peter Ellis. Mr Ellis, who was convicted of sexual offences against seven children in 1993, was granted a hearing in the Supreme Court in the middle of last year as he sought to get his convictions overturned. But when he died in September, that hearing was left up in the air. The counsel for Mr Ellis's estate, as well as Te Hunga Roya Māori o Aotearoa, or the Māori Law Society, made the case that because of tikanga, it was necessary to proceed. Natalie Coates, representing Peter Ellis, said everyone, Māori or Pākehā, dead or alive, has mana. Mana and the importance of seeking to restore and uphold mana is something that transcends death. A hara or a wrong is before the court today, or is before the court, and a door has been opened to seek to redress that. It's necessary for this case to continue to get to a state of air or finality. Mr Ellis's case has drawn significant attention. The Supreme Court will have to make a decision about tikanga with English-style law. And while Western law systems consider individual legal interests end with death, Mata Nuku Mahueka from the Māori Law Society says that's not the case with tikanga. The essential position from a tikanga point of view is that actually, you know, death in and of itself doesn't bring to, to an end a person's reputation or the need to, if you can, vindicate that. Crucial to the argument that the hearing should continue is the concept of hara, or a wrongdoing, which has been done. Mr Mahueka and Ms Coates say the hara extends not just to the late Mr Ellis, but to his whānau as well as to the victims and their whānau. Natalie Coates says calling an end to the appeal, which had already been granted, would raise subsequent questions for all. If the matter stops now, There will always be that question lingering whether Mr Ellis would have been successful if he were alive. Having the case heard will assist um, or at least get to an ear on the question that was raised when leave was granted. But Solicitor General Una Jagos, on behalf of the Crown, argued the hara suffered by the victims outweighs that possibly done to Mr Ellis. She argued if the hearing went ahead and all Mr Ellis's convictions were overturned, that would also leave an imbalance on the part of the victims. In my submission, that will forever leave this matter for the victims in a state of unbalance and the hara that they have suffered will forever be left unattended, unprobed, because as a matter of fact, Mr Ellis cannot be retried. If the full hearing is granted, it would be the first time an appeal has been heard in this country after the appellant has passed away. It would also have major implications for how tikanga Māori is incorporated into law. It would potentially set a precedent for using tikanga Māori, specifically the mana of a person, as a reason to continue the appeal of a person even once they've passed away. However, Justice Williams, the only Māori Supreme Court justice, raised concerns that this would be handing over the interpretation interpretation of te kanga Māori to judges. The Supreme Court reserved its decision. O te hōtaka o te ahiahi. Ko Miriana Johnson tēnei. And political parties are ramping up their electioneering with Hawke's Bay the battleground for the hearts and minds of voters today. While national leader uh, Todd Muller was wooing farmers in rural Hastings, on the other side of town, the coalition government, courtesy of the Provincial Growth Fund, was spraying millions of dollars around. Anusha Bradley reports. At the Hawke's Bay Regional Sports Park in Hastings, the Under Secretary for Regional Economic Development and Deputy Leader of New Zealand First, Fletcher Tabuto, announced $5 million from the Provincial Growth Fund to build a hostel to help disadvantaged youth get into training and jobs. It is an opportunity for 100 uh, young people to come in during the year, 40 at a time, and to um, I don't know, I suppose the basic, most basic way to describe it is to be supported. I used to be a high school teacher, so I know what sports can do for young people. The hostel will host sports camps run by the Hawke's Bay Community Fitness Centre Trust and its chairman, Sir Graham Avery, says the facility will be a game changer. 
uh, youths who are not in employment or yet in educational training from underprivileged communities to develop character, leadership and communication skills. A further 2.8 million will be loaned to Hastings-based Hawk Group, which makes fruit trays out of recycled paper, allowing it to expand, creating 30 new jobs. And because it's election year, Mr Tabuto wasted no time reminding locals the fund has invested nearly 150 million in the region and that the 2.4 billion spent nationally will create even more jobs than expected. We will create 10,000 jobs through the Provincial Growth Fund. In fact, their numbers suggest it will be closer to 15,000 by the time they've finished. So this is an incredible investment into our regions. On the other side of Hastings, national leader Todd Muller fronted about 40 farmers in Maraikakaho, where the government's lack of drought support and the conversion of farms to forestry were key concerns. Mr Muller says farmers are doing it tough. It's been a really, really tough uh, uh, year and you know they feel it. They don't feel particularly appreciated. They get a sense that actually uh, you know, farming is getting harder. And he also took a dig at Health Minister David Clark's treatment of Dr Ashley Bloomfield. Well, I thought it was a disgrace and I've called him a non-essential worker. Uh, did it deliberately. I actually think he's a, a, a shirker actually. And what I mean by that is that New Zealanders uh, have, a, have a, a, an expectation that if, you've, if you haven't done something right, or something, if you've dropped the ball, you're front. Fletcher Tabuto didn't visit any farmers on his whirlwind tour of the bay today, but says his priority is helping farmers get water storage for the region with funding from the Provincial Growth Fund. While nationals held the Tukituki electorate since 2005, the majority over Labour has narrowed over the last three elections, and in 2017 there was just 2,800 votes between sitting MP Lawrence Yule and Labour's candidate Anna Lorke. Todd Muller will host a meeting in Havelock North this evening and unveil National's first hoardings and election campaign slogan in Napier tomorrow morning. In Hastings for Checkpoint, Anusha Bradley. It's been dubbed Canterbury's little seaside community who never gave up. Nine years in the making, it was Redcliffe School's grand opening, reopening today after earthquake damage rendered the old site unsafe. The occasion was marked with tears, hugging, singing and some very special guests. Katie Tott filed this report. Home. After nine years playing hopscotch with temporary sites, Redcliffe's school's past and present students, parents and teachers have celebrated their official homecoming and it's even got the Dave Dobbin endorsement. Earthquakes toppled the cliffs behind the primary school in 2011, but now the school bell is ringing just around the corner at a seaside Beachville Road site. On it, a $16 million campus boasting classrooms with kitchens, a far cry from the porticoms and makeshift classrooms used to date, most recently shared with the Van Ash Deaf Education Centre in nearby Sumner. The new school's got enough mat space and playground equipment for the current 200 students plus up to 100 more. These students told RNZ the new surrounds are definitely going to make them smarter. Our classroom has a big open view that you can look out to see the estuary and some cool furniture. I also like the undercroft underneath the nets because it's got lots of really cool trees. So much more space to play in. But today was also time to reflect because Redcliffe's school very nearly didn't get a second chance. In 2016, the school was told it would have to shut completely. 